All right. So, good day, everybody, and uh, welcome to Home Companion Foundation's webinar series. And uh, today we are hosting the third webinar of this series. The title of today's webinar is Preserving the Mental Health in COVID-19. Mm, I'm Atre, and I'm the Chief Executive of Home Companion Foundation. And the On Companion Foundation is basically an India-based nonprofit organization, which we started back in the middle of 2017. So from the foundation, we provide a safe and dedicated patient support networking site only for cancer patients, their families, their caregivers, their relatives. And uh, as a nonprofit organization, it is kind of needless to say that the site is completely free of use, free to use. And uh, both the registration as well as the content of the site is strictly moderated to minimize the unintended usage of the site. For example, the internet trolling, the abusing, which, is, which are very common to other social media networking sites. And uh, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, the topic of today's webinar is preserving the mental health in COVID-19. And can I please request everyone joining once again, can I please request to keep your microphones on mute? It is extremely important for the quality control of the recording. So please, will you please keep your microphones on mute all the time? Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry we repeated this. <laughs> So as I was saying is that the topic of today's webinar is basically preserving the mental health in COVID-19. And uh, uh, we all are going through a very challenging and uncertain time. There's no doubt about it. And uh, we all are facing very many uh, different challenges in our, in both our personal as, as well as in our professional lives. Uh, well, the mental pressure of dealing with the social distancing, the isolation is literally huge. And at the same time, many of us are basically forced to live away from our families, which is adding a huge amount of pressure to us. And to make things worse, uh, the growing uncertainty during this deep economic recession that we are facing is, I mean, this is becoming more and more, I mean, we all are becoming more and more prone to the anxiety and depression during this time. So in this session, what we will do is that we will be discussing the effect of the pandemic on the mental health across the different age groups, uh, ranging from the kids, the teens, the working adults, the elderly, and uh, we'll be sharing some tools and techniques basically to foster our mental well-being during this time. And so we will also be touching on about the special special mental distress brought onto the lives of the cancer patients by the pandemic. So our speaker today is uh, Dr. Shamadrita Shaha. Shamadrita is an active member of Un Companion Foundation. Shamadrita, by profession, she is a psychologist and an academic mentor and who is practicing for last 10 years. And uh, she gained her training in cognitive behavior therapy as well as in narrative therapy. And uh, she completed both her post graduation as well as her doctoral degree. She, she has gotten a doctoral degree from University and has uh, multiple research publications under her wing. And uh, she has international work experiences as well. So currently, she is holding the teaching positions in Neotia University as well as in Amiti University. And uh, alongside, she is also working as a counselor in one of the most well-known mental health centers of Calcutta called uh, Mansi Therapy. Now, before I hand it over to Shamadrita, I would just have to do a little bit of housekeeping. One is first and foremost, which I kept on saying like a broken record. I'm requesting all the attendees, please keep your microphone on mute all the time. This is for the sake of the recording quality, because we want to record this session. We want to load this session in our Facebook page. We want to circulate this session to many of our friends and people who wants to attend, uh, but could not. So it is extremely important that we keep the background not noise at bay. 
please keep your microphones on mute throughout the session. And uh, secondly is that this is a topic which is quite relevant and pertinent to all of us in this time. So I'm expecting a lot of questions in this session. So uh, after Shamadrita's presentation, we are going to open the floor for questions. So we'll be taking some questions from you. So what you have to do is that you just have to type in your questions inside the small chat box that you're seeing on your screen. And uh, so after the presentation, we'll take some of the questions. I'm expecting the Q&A session or something to be around five to seven minutes because we do not have infinite time for this. And uh, uh, Shamadrita will take uh, some of the questions. And uh, so what will happen to the question we could not take? Well, as you know that uh, we will be posting this session on our Facebook page. So please do write your questions again that, against that post and Shamadrita will make sure she will take time to read and answer all of your questions. Okay. So I think with this, I should basically stop talking and give the session over to Shamadrita now. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Atsavi. I hope I'm, a, I'm audible. Yes. Hello are. and good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Shamadrita Shaha. I'm a psychologist. Uh, it is an honor to be associated with On Companion Foundation. Thank you for having me in this platform. I'm really grateful to the management for uh, having me in this uh, honorable platform. Today, uh, we are here to discuss uh, or make an attempt to find calm in this time of turbulence and turmoil. Uh, in this time of pandemic, it is uh, quite natural. It is actually extremely natural to feel sad, angry, worried about the future regarding what is going to happen, irritated. These feelings are quite natural. Now, these feelings must be uh, so much uh, over us. It must be taking so much toll over us that it is taking, it is affecting our sleeping and eating habits. And these feelings are getting uh, in our way of uh, living a healthy life. Now, uh, in discussing uh, the present uh, preservation of mental health, that's why uh, I am here to discuss and you know find out even I want to find out how do we uh, preserve that calmness or how do we uh, find that uh, that sanity to keep us calm in this uh, turbulent time so I would uh, I, I'll I like to suggest Devashishta to go on to the next slide thank you okay so in discussing uh, preservation of mental health uh, I have thought of discussing the different issues encountered by people of different age of different age brackets thereby uh, these are the age groups uh, age groups for today's uh, discussion like uh, I have uh, differentiated among kids uh, during this COVID-19 the teens and young adults in this lockdown women and gender role during this pandemic war from home is, is it a boon or a curse uh, coping for the elderly while uh, while quarantined and COVID-19 and cancer patients. Uh, and finally, addressing a stigma for the COVID-19 patients. So these are the abruptly the heads I have thought of uh, for discussing today's uh, today's preservation of mental health. So moving on to the first, next uh, slide. Can you please move on to the next slide? So uh, how many of you are really worried about how to keep your uh, children engaged, uh, how to make them listen to your instructions? Since all your kids are at home, uh, schools are closed, and all your kids are at home in this lockdown, I must be pretty, I, I, I guess must pretty, uh, quite a number of uh, parents are very worried about how to make, the, make their uh, kids and children uh, remain engaged. Um, in this regard, I'll definitely say relax and breathe. If you are calm, they will be calm. It is very important for us as parents to provide them with a calm environment in which they will feel safe and at rest. 
their life has changed in many ways. Children's life has changed in many ways. They do not always have the language to share and communicate what they are going through. I suggest talk to them, have a conversation with them, have a routine, but don't be rigid. See if you can do some physical activities like the like as like parent child plank pose or doing some household core activities like blooming or mopping the floor that comes for the daily household core activities, learning a new language, checking out some free cooking and science experiments every day. Just uh, be with them, ask them how was their day, what went good on a good in their day, what went good with their with you uh, while they were spending time with you, what went good with them. So talk to, talk to them regarding this virus. Educate them about this virus apart from what is media telling them because they it is it is quite a stressful situation for them also. Put off the TV and the social media for some time in the evening when it's the virus free time because the media is always up with the COVID news and the death counts and all the crisis news. So talk to them about the virus. Uh, portray them. You can make paintings and artwork with the virus, how the virus affecting our life. Talk to them. Be open to li be open and listen to them. You know that will help help them. You know rather than keeping them engaged in any activities, this uh, communication will help them a lot. Ask them. Ask them how they want to spend their time uh, during this free time. So that will uh, definitely help them to find a safe place at home and to you. Uh, it is, in fact, uh, easing out your uh, burden will definitely go a long way to provide them a safer, uh, a safer environment at home. So definitely this may work rather than you panicking, you stressing out yourself. Keep calm. Take a breath. There is no hurry. If you know they do not. If you do not feel hurried and chased, your kids also won't feel hurried and chased. In that regard, again, I have another slide which will be more relatable, I guess. Can you please move on to the next slide? Yes. The whole positive parenting during COVID-19. This is a slide I have blended from my clinic's website. Uh, this is like, you know, spending more one-to-one -one time, praising the child, allowing the child to have some boredom time, you know, how they want to use their boredom time and what they want to do when they are bored. What is the, you know, what is the feeling they are going through? Help them communicate. Most importantly, make time for yourself. Take time out. Otherwise, if you do not take time out for yourself, you won't be able to keep calm and, you know, handle the entire situation, okay? Keeping your instructions more positive rather than, you know, in a more request-oriented, rather than giving them commands, like don't make a mess or please put your clothes away is a much, uh, much, uh, much uh, approachable way to say to or talk to them rather than, you know, just giving them a command. That's somewhat about, I have chalked out what I can say about how to deal with your kids. Next slide. We'll talk now moving on to the teens and adults. Uh, can I have the next slide? Yeah, thank you. So now moving on to the teens and adults. Uh, it is also immensely uh, stressful time for the teens and the young adults uh, because uh, they are unable to, they are also unable to go out, meet their friends, party, hang out with their partners. So there are reportedly uh, increased feeling of loneliness uh, from these uh, age bracket people. Uh, besides, they are also coping with this new normal of uh, online classes and following the academic virtually. Uh, so here I would like to suggest let's accept. Let's accept and read and uh, because not everything is in our control. Let's not get into what is not in our control. Let's ac acknowledge the difficult situation. And it is quite obvious to feel stressed, irritated, and angry, or feel sad or depressed. That does not make you weak. Feeling sad and you know, feeling low does not make you weak. It is quite natural to feel sad and weak while we are going through a crisis situation, understanding that not everything is in our control. Can I have the next slide? That's like the slide which talks about what are the things that are in our control and what are the 
things which we are not in our control. So the, here it is. I have got this, uh, again, uh, this interesting picture which says uh, what are the things that are in our control and what are the things which are not in our control. Let's first uh, see uh, what we cannot control. We cannot control uh, if, others, uh, if others are not following social distancing. Sorry, can I go back to the next previous slide? Yeah, okay. So uh, we cannot control if others are not following the social distancing. Uh, what others are doing, if others are not, you know, we are anxious during this time of following social distancing rules, uh, wearing masks, using sanitizers, even, you know, bugging ourselves up if others are not following the rules. The amount of toilet paper at the store, how long is this will last, how others are reacting, other people's motives, predicting what what will happen next, you know, the future, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, if we keep on focusing on these external objective worlds, the stress will be more and more and more. And if we focus internally, it says that if we cannot go out, let's go in. I can control. What I can control is my positive attitude, how I follow my CDC recommendations, my own social distancing rules, whether I'm following the social distancing rules or whatever, whatever uh, my kindness and my grace, limiting my social media exposure, turning off the news, finding fun things to do at home, how do I spend my quality time with myself and my family, how I, I react to situations. Situations are not in my control, but how do I react to situations are definitely in my control. So that's the biggest power we have. I often say that you have the remote. Do not give the remote control of your mind to someone else. You keep it in your hand. That will be much more safer. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, now going on to the next group of people. During this phase of work from home, I am getting a lot of calls and messages from a lot, a lot of groups, but especially from this group of working mothers and homemakers. Okay, they are facing a uh, lot of uh, intense problem of increased workload. Uh, many had to manage both work from home and work for home. Okay, so uh, they they uh, they may uh, there are many times when they have to manage both uh, professional work and their daily household chores uh, all at the same time uh, because you know even uh, even it is an unlock or unlock one right now but the domestic health is yet not coming uh, for coming to our places for many of our places to help us. Now, due to this pandemic, most of our family members are at home. Now, the question may arise that, uh, you know, why do only women have to go through the entire pressure? Uh, let's uh, face the reason we all know that uh, the society in which we, the society in which we live in is largely influenced by gender roles. Uh, in case of uh, women, it is uh, considered that it is their duty and their responsibility to take care of the kids, to take care of the elderly, to do all the household chores, as well as manage your professional work. So any kind of disaster or misfortune puts some questions in front of us. Now, this COVID-19 has also put some question in front of us. That is, uh, in order to in order to maintain our well-being and for our survival, what is more essential? Is it essential to follow this uh, gender role, or is it time to redefine this gender role and bring a change in this setup? Uh, sure, in this case, uh, I would suggest that women uh, themselves they have to take initiative, we women uh, ourselves have to take the initiative to share and distribute the various household responsibilities with other members, uh, uh, with other members of the family. Due to, uh, due to the long drawn habit, the male members in our family, since we, uh, we have these strict gender role activities uh, in our society, due to this long drawn habit, the male members uh, are, are always, you know, take things which are convenient to them. So now if we see uh, how can we manage the situation of, you know, getting the women, getting entire workload on them, so that will, 
definitely call for certain uh, certain uh, tips and suggestions from my end like you know you can work in shifts like you can work in shifts and rotations at a particular time of the day you can lock yourself up and do your uh, work uh, do your office work and at that point of time the man of the family or the husband or the father taking care of the kid and doing some household chores rotation of making the dinner rotation of making the lunch rotation of making, making breakfast definitely will help you know uh, to redefine this gender roles or taking the help of the little ones of your family as well you know the little ones are also very keen in you know helping in the kitchen work or doing some household chores so do take the help of the kids as well now uh, not only this time you know the kind of gender role and shared responsibility if we can carry on and maintain in further times also uh, this can make us and Uh, this can make us as a resilient family you know we can come up as a resilient family uh, if uh, so if, if we can come up as a resilient family uh, if we redefine this uh, gender role so i give you this food for thought that uh, how uh, are you going to do it like i also find it at times very difficult to uh, do it break the gender roles and i also find it at times very difficult to get through you know the micromanagement you know i feel that others won't be able to do things the way i will be doing it so how do you also manage that that's a food for thought i give it to you give it to you i ask you that how, how what do you want means you know do you want to carry on this gender role or you want to make some changes and redefine this gender role and manage the situation better and how are you going to do it so you can always comment in the comment section uh next is uh, can i have the next slide now uh, similarly as like women men are also getting too much bugged up by the increased work from home pressure as uh, uh, as due to maintaining social distance is uh, social distance many of the companies have uh, have make it compulsory for their empl- employees to work from home now uh, this is uh, uh, this critical situation has uh, led to a downward of the economic graph for which people often encounter uh, people often encountering uh, pay cuts to the extent they are losing their employability now uh, this critical condition of course is making very insecure of course is making us very insecure about our job uh, as a result of which we are often making uh, unrealistic commitments uh, in order to prove our worth and which of course we are unable to keep many of the time let me tell you that uh, no companies in the world would like you to like you if you do not if you are unable to com- keep your commitment so do keep realistic commitments do keep take a break relax and do keep realistic commitments you are you cannot I mean you know the your colleagues and your uh, your colleagues and your uh, managers won't be you know the buttering business won't go too long the you know we often feel that the other colleagues will be doing must be making a lot more good impression on the uh, authority uh, by just buttering but that is not going to help in the long run let me tell you so it's okay just make realistic commitments uh, secondly regarding this work from home one more issue that is coming up uh, which is the shift of work in the sense that many people are complaining that it is extremely exhaustive and it's extremely tiring at times i have also experienced it many of the time uh, that it is very ext- extremely tiring to uh, you know continuously work uh, at our home because uh, it seems the workload has increased at home uh, in, in this work from home uh, mode so what to do about that uh, in that regard uh, you know i have noticed something we often uh, we often work with our laptops eat eat sleep scroll our social media profiles all at one place either it's on the bed or on the couch so it's very difficult to you know it's very difficult to feel the break even though we are taking window breaks but it does not make us feel that we have taken a break and it makes us feel very exhausted 
so how to uh, handle this situation uh, in this regard what i have thought of is uh, it is like you know if what if the way you can repeat the the way you used to do before lockdown before this pandemic you can do here as well you can wake up in the morning uh, freshen up and keep your workstation in some different place uh, than what is your relaxation places that can be any corner of the room you know you can decide with your family where you know you can if you decide with your family and make a corner of the room that's your workstation and whenever you take a break you get up from that place go for a walk in the other room or you know drink some water and you know go for a walk and then come back you know do not keep on sitting there walking and then taking breaks and then walking then it won't look like a break and at the end of the day also you get up from the chair or get up from wherever you are working and then again uh, come back to your home pajamas like you know whatever you wear at your home and be in a relaxed mode and you know go to your relaxation mode on do not be you know always in the in a same dress and the same place doing the same work throughout the day is actually very exhausting believe me i also go through sometimes the same thing so please make it a point that you uh, you shift from work mode to relaxed mode which is very essential to fight this exhaustion of extreme workload in work from home mode okay so uh, the next slide please okay why am i talking about uh, uh, all these is because you know i have talked about uh, working mothers i have talked about uh, mothers parents i have talked about uh, men working from home uh, women working from home why is it very essential to discuss about these people is because in this present crisis situation is getting extremely stressful for us uh, so in this extreme stressful situation it is very important that we fill, we keep our cups filled up if we do not get into a filled up condition we won't be able to pour to others empty cups so self care is that filled cup you know you have to have get into some self care habits which will help you to continue and to fight with the stressful situation i have got this slide from iop institute of psychiatry the website which has uh, jotted down four important uh, important uh, self care habits that will help you to keep your you know mental hygiene so do not compromise on your basic needs of healthy food and 7 to 8 hours of sleep as for your diet and sleep is the four most important thing that comes set reminder for your medicines timely this is a good time to quit smoking yes because definitely uh, the one who smoke are more prone to get into this virus so it's a very good time to restrict and keep a uh, check on your smoking do physical exercise start with 10 minutes you know and can extend to 30 minutes you can start with a you not know, 10 minutes and uh, do not uh, keep it a long goal of you know i have to do one physical exercise early morning for an hour do not put it that way it is very stressful you won't be able to you know we none of us even i cannot you know face that you know make that goal achievable so put a short term goal so start with 10 minutes of physical exercise that will definitely help you keep your cup filled up can i have the next slide please okay now coming to the immunocompromised group uh, it is uh, we all know that uh, covid-19 is a virus which is uh, more effective to immunocompromised groups like old age children and carcinogenic patients so starting with the old age and pandemic anxiety amongst the lonely and elderly people because you know we all know that uh, elderly people at our places are more at times you know aging gets into more anxiety so in this pandemic uh, pandemic many of uh, many of the elderly people having their kids and you know having their younger ones out from away from them for uh, away from them for if they are leading to job or due to education for whatever reason so they are really anxious so uh, how can you help them Uh, or what can you suggest them or how can these elderly people get get keep their mental hygiene and keep calm during this uh, pandemic is definitely physical exercise physical exercise is something i keep on saying that it helps you to 
fight with the with any kind of uh, any kind of stressful situation because it tra strengthens your immune immune system. Uh, yes, limited exposure to social media. Keep in check of uh, keep in check of what you are exposed to, whether there is an authenticity of information or not. Only follow the WHO website for COVID-19 news. And uh, other than that, you know, overwhelming information will not going to help you anyway. That will only, only, you know, heighten your anxiety. So it's better that you limit your exposure to excessive information. Uh, ensure proper nutrition through home-cooked fresh meals. Hydrate frequently and take fresh juice to boost immunity. Yes, vitamin C. Vitamin C is very essential for, you know, building up a stronger immunity for elderly people also. Daily medications for them. Do not, you know, do not forget. You know, they can forget, and do remind them, and do talk about their medicines that whether they have taken their medicines on regular time or not. Um, and uh, interacting and connecting with their friends, family, and various other people through various mediums, you know, various mediums of technology that will definitely help them to feel the social support that they have some some people to bank up on or fall back. Can I have the next slide? Okay, uh, so this Union uh, Union for International Cancer Control is re has really shown a lot of concern for this uh, for the cancer patients because uh, the cancer patients uh, are among those high risk uh, high risk of serious illness from uh, infection because their immune system are often weakened by cancer and its treatment. You know, they have a very weak immune system because of cancer and there is after effects of the treatment. So UICC has really concerned about how they are fighting with this pandemic anxiety. Can I have the next slide, please? So here are certain points, the pointers I have jotted down in case uh, you have, you know somebody or you have someone someone carcinogenic going through this terminal illness, they must be fighting with a lot of anxiety. They must be fighting with a lot of anxiety during this pandemic. Talk to, talking to your care team, talking to the person's care team, talking to the patient's care team, how to go about with the treatment, uh, following, the, for following the rules and regulations of COVID, getting the facts from reliable source again, you know, getting facts from whatever reliable source, authentic source, practicing mindfulness, that is uh, practicing the uh, being aware or being attentive to the surrounding, to the present surroundings with all the five senses, you know, being the, coming back to the body, you know, how are your body, how is your body feel, uh, experiencing right now? So practicing mindfulness, sticking to a, uh, uh, to a schedule. I know that during this pandemic, all of our schedules are a little erratic because, you know, uh, uh, maybe many of us are working from home and we do not really have to go to a uh, office or travel somewhere to, uh, to uh, start the getting uh, start getting the work done uh, so many of us are going through an erratic schedule so is the cancer patient so i would suggest that yes i try to stick to a schedule that will be healthy for you uh, stay connected again you know connecting with us with uh, your near and dear ones will help you to feel that uh, you know you have people to fall back and remember that uh, the way you think, the way you feel. So remember, emotions are contagious. Emotions are always contagious. Energy is contagious. So the way you think, where you feel. So it is very important to, uh, to keep a monitor on how you are thinking and how you are feeling. That is actually going to uh, that is actually going to heighten your uh, carcinogenic anxiety or, you know, you, it can suppress your carcinogenic anxiety. Be kind to yourself. Try to support yourself the way you would, like, you would care for your friend. Don't be harsh on yourself. Be kind to yourself. Don't be critical on yourself. That will definitely help you. You know, the way you care for your friend, you care for yourself. So that will definitely help you to fight, fight with anxiety. And finally, addressing the social stigma associated with the COVID-19. There is a huge lot of counts, rising counts, everywhere in every locality. We have, uh, you know, we find neighbors and people in the community getting affected with COVID-19. So that's making us anxious. But again, to remind you that maintaining social distancing, 
does not does not restrict you from being compassionate and empathetic. I would definitely uh, uh, like you to support, you know, all of us supporting the COVID patients and healthcare workers, even after social distancing, you know, uh, being compassionate towards them, being empathetic towards them will definitely help them to, uh, uh, to fight this stressful situation. Like in any way you can connect with them through a various medium of telephoning them, messaging them, or doing, you know, video calling them, texting them will definitely help them to connect and you know share their difficulties, what they are going through. Know what medication your loved one is need, uh, taking. You know what are the medicines. What are you can ask them about their food and so whether they are getting the food or not. And, you know what are the care they are get, getting. You know they'll feel a lot of calm and they'll feel a lot more relaxed if they are they can uh, share things with you they can communicate with you rather than you you know just totally shut yourself up just because the person is going through this covid 19. Uh, try to have them have a four week supply of prescription over the counter medication and see if you can help them uh, have an extra on hand and you know you can always provide them with food or you know packaged food disposable packaged food or disposable packaged medications that they require and provide them from maintaining social distance, right? So that will definitely help you, you as well as them to fight this crisis situation. Finally, uh, I have summed up the entire uh, presentation into uh, this last slide, which I have again got from uh, this website of Institute of Psychiatry. Uh, how to take care of your mental health, where I have found they have really put this five pointers well written uh, to how to finally keep our calm or preserve our mental health during this pandemic. Do not struggle. First one is do not struggle to get rid of the disturbing thoughts. They will come and go automatically. The thoughts are like clouds. They will come and they'll go. Do not try to stop their thoughts. You, we all have our cluttered thoughts. We all get cluttered by thoughts. So do not try to stop the thought, the incoming of the thought. So it's okay. They'll come and they'll go. Again, in practice mindfulness, that is, again, coming back to your body, coming back to your body and feeling the environment, present environment, which is uh, non-threatening, you know, experiencing the uh, present environment, which is non-threatening with all the five sense organs. That will, that's very therapeutic. That helps you a lot to calm down. Expressing the incoming thoughts using any modality. Share with people, expressing the incoming thoughts that you have, you can share with people. Stay connected mentally and virtually with your near and dear ones. Do stay connected. Talk to your friends, talk to your relatives, whomever you want, you know, you can always talk and gossip and chit chat prevent burnout by consulting a mental health professional but finally if you feel that it is not working do 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 seek professional help do seek professional help i will uh, end up by saying a famous quote by c.s lewis that mental pain, pain is less dramatic than physical pain but it is more common and also harder to bear so please do seek professional help if you need at any point of time you feel that things are not going well for you and you uh, it is in, you know talking to your friends and family is not means merely talking to your friends and family will not help you so please take professional help i'll end by that thank you so much i have come to an end and i will definitely like to answer any questions you have thanks so much Thank you very much, Hamadrita. That was a really, you know, insightful and informative one. Thanks so much for taking time, making the presentation, and making everyone, all of us, aware. It was incredibly helpful, to be honest. And now this floor is open to question. And I do see a question from uh, Shanko. And uh, okay, I'm just going to read the question out here. Uh, so he is saying, in this growing pandemic of COVID-19, the socio-economic condition is widely affected, where people are losing their jobs and hence there is an increased depression. So what is your suggestion to fight such depression? Uh, Shamadita, you are on mute. 
Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I audible now? Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yes, uh, thank you for asking that. Uh, yes, we are going through a lot of economic downfall resulting into uh, job loss and pay cuts. So I believe the situation will surpass. I don't know how do means you know how do I how how will I react if I lose my job the next day? But yes, nothing you know nothing stopped. It's it's always time to you know it's time to fight all together. So definitely uh, we need to if it is the situation is so hard that a job loss is leading to you know an extreme depressive phase extreme depressive phase where you have low appetite, sleep loss, uh, a lot of loss of energy, lack of uh, pleasure in enjoyable activities, then you definitely have to seek professional help in how to combat this stressful situation. Thank you, Chamadrita. I don't see any more questions in the chat box, so maybe I can ask one of my questions here. Uh, so, yeah, sure. <laughs> so you talked about mindfulness a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. when as an individual, obviously I'm not a psychologist, but when as an individual mm -hmm. I think of mindfulness, I think of that. Is that uh, to me mindfulness is about whether or not I'm thinking actively about each and every situation in my own way or having my own interpretation into it without taking any cue from society, societal doctrines. Uh, you know, my own experiences, whatever that is. So to me, mindfulness is about actively engaging myself in for each and every situation. So when you say mindfulness from a psychological point of view, uh, is it different? I mean, how would people actually practice it in real life? How, yes. how does that yes. look like? Yes, uh, practicing uh, intense mindfulness is, uh, is does require training. It is actually uh, it's the quality or state of being uh, conscious or aware uh, to the present environment, uh, paying attention uh, to your body. It's, it's very hard to slow down in this busy world and uh, notice things all around. So take time, taking time out, you know, trying to take time out and experience your environment with all your senses like touch, sound, sight, smell, and taste, you know experiencing with all the five senses, you know, calming down, breathing, and, you know, I often say that our body is our home. We come back to our home, okay? So when, you know, it's just cluttered thoughts, every, all our cluttered thoughts are, you know, bothering us. So coming back to our home and getting, you know, my, focusing on my breathing, focusing, inhaling on ex exhaling, that will definitely help us to become mindful, mindful being meaning it's to pay attention, to be conscious, to be aware of what is happening right now. Because many of the times anxiety or our panic attacks happen in a non-threatening situation just because of the thought we are having inside. And, and you know, the threat is there inside us. Many of the time the threat is inside us and not in the situation. So the present situation may be totally non-threatening. I am assuming that situations and, you know, the mind screen is showing me a lot of threatening situations and thereby I'm feeling that anxiety or I'm feeling that fear or I'm fear getting into that panic attack. So definitely getting into a aware condition when I feel that my present situation is quite coming, quite non-threatening. And, you know, I can feel uh, a smooth texture in my hand. I have a taste in my test buds. I can see the a beautiful color in front of me. I have, I have, I can smell some uh, some flower in front of me. So the, these uh, these sensations will definitely help us to you know become mindful and you know uh, fight back that that particular situation because it is that situation. Once that situation surpasses, you know things after some time things will be I, as I said that emotions are like cloud. It will be you know I'll be back to you know I'll be back to a stable condition. So yes, mindfulness do require a little bit of training um, many of the time. Uh, you know, therapist does work on their clients. We do work on our clients and patients to how to become mindful. Visualization acts a very well, you know, uh, well-researched technique on how mindfulness can be exercised. 
Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. I see one question from Pia here, and she's asking that how can I differentiate between regular low feeling in a full blown um, regular low feeling in a full blown depression? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, there is any timeline for that? Okay. I guess the question okay. is how how you yeah, to differentiate the uh, you know the regular low feeling inside a full yeah yeah of course of depression. course we do yeah. have regular yeah we do have regular thank you for that asking that uh, we do have our regular low mood and how do I differentiate between uh, you know clinical depression and regular low mood is we have our you know our nomenclature mother nomenclature of DSM five which we follow regarding this diagnosis that uh, you know these uh, the symptoms of depression that is low appetite low sleep or extreme excessive sleep or a loss of pleasure in loss of loss of enjoyment and pleasurable activities loss of sexual drive um, loss of uh, energy feeling fatigued all the time feeling low most of the days in fact all the days all these symptoms must last for at least a little prolonged time and you know just for you know one or two days and then it is vanishing off and again again it is coming for two or two days and it cannot take place that way it means it has to be a prolonged time and you know there's a consistent fall of energy and you know that's the that's that has to happen you know, for a prolonged time and uh, there there of course is associated with a lot of death wishes in 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 extreme cases there is a lot of death wishes and with some people attempting to getting into suicidal attempts so definitely in that case or you know whenever people feeling that they are having this uh, regular low moods which they cannot cope up with i suggest at that point of time do seek professional suggestion so that they can help you to how to handle this regular low mood so that you do not get into that depressive phase and if you are going through that depressive phase then so of course you need to consult with some professional uh, so that you can uh, keep your uh, pre pre preserve your mental sanity and you know uh, uplift your productivity okay thank you very much for that Shamandita. and i think with this we have come to an end of this uh, whole presentation once again thank you very much Shamandita, for taking time uh, preparing for this educating all of us it is really need of an hour and we all are impacted by this pandemic our, our mental wellness is kind of you know affected somewhat uh, i mean we all of us are impacted and affected none of us are out of it some um, some of us are more impacted some of us are less impacted but we all do so we really appreciate your time as uh, uh, for preparing this spending time with us and uh, educating us on this and uh, i would also like to thank all of the other attendees who actually are spending time uh, thinking and talking and listening uh, uh, discussion about mental health, mental awareness in Sunday evening, which is which means that we as a society, we are making progress. We are trying to be more aware of mental health. It is not something which we want to uh, put inside our carpet. So uh, it's I, I really thank all of you for joining. And this pandemic is teaching us many things. And one of the things I would just like to highlight is that Social distancing is one of the things which is not really going to go away anytime soon. So we are emphasizing a lot on digital technologies and on Companion Foundations tool is one of such digital technologies which is which makes people to be in touch without being in without being physically in touch with each other, but be in touch with your body, who understands you, who have been there in life where you are during your cancer journey and during your cancer treatment 24 7 in a safe and effective way so please spread the word about what we do and how essential it is and uh, mental health and psychological health is of paramount importance so uh, uh, spread the word about uh, companion foundation and the work we do and, uh, in general the mental health so once again thanking all of you for your participation for your active participation people who question people who listen throughout the seminar and um, we will see you again soon
Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.